All right, so let's be reminded of Ankhdu's amazing sexual prowess. We are Tablet One, Epic of Gilgamesh, line one ninety. Uh, she did for a man the work of a woman, his passion caressed and embraced her. For six days and seven nights, Ankadu was erect. He coupled with Shamhan. I don't think he slept for six days and seven nights either. He was just like ready for sex for a whole week. <laughs> Creation for a week. There's another old Genesis, Old Testament themed. When with her delights he was fully sated, he turned his gaze to his herd. The gazelles saw Ankadu. They started to run. The beasts of the field shied away from his presence. He, he's no longer a wild man. He's, he's been humanized by the woman. Ankadu had defiled his body so pure. Ah, this is interesting. Ankadu has defiled his body so pure, his legs stood still, though his herd was in motion. Ankadu was weakened. He could not run as before. But now he had reason and wide understanding. Wow, look at this. So, so this is the fall, right? This is, this is in, in these four lines, you've got the fall. And it's got the same kind of Old Testament motif. The man was fallen by the seduction powers of the woman. And, and it's, you know, fuck the patriarchy. But uh, it's still, it's really, it's really striking. You know, so I'll, I'll read that one more time. Ankadu had defiled his body so pure. So by having sex, he was defiled. His legs stood still, though his herd was in motion, so he can't run with the herds anymore. He was weakened. Ankadu was weakened. He could not run as before. But now he had reason and wide understanding. So what did we give up as humans when we fell, right? We're talking about the fall. Forget that it was defilement, right? Or, you know, don't blame the woman in some sort of negative way. Uh, but we were domesticated. And in the process of domestication, of domestication of animals, of domestication of ourselves, we perceived that we fell. And when we fell, we lost our connection with nature, right? This is what it says 4,500 years ago that Ankadu was no longer a beast. He became a man. He lost his beastly power, so he was weaker. He was slower. But he had reason. He had wide understanding, so we exchanged physical abilities along with natural abilities for reason, for understanding. And, you know, we can, we can mourn the loss of nature today, but was this, really, was this really a bad deal? You know, was it a fall? This is the question. In some sense, it was certainly a fall, but, but in other sense, it was, it was a rising. So how do, we, how do we grapple with this imagery of falling into knowledge? and out of ignorance. And, you know, should we be narrativizing it as a fall? That's the question I have for you with this episode, so you can write your answers in the comments to that. So I'm gonna read that one more time. It's a really important line. Ankadu had defiled his body so pure. His legs stood still, though his herd was in motion. Ankadu was weakened, could not run as before, but now he had reason and wide understanding. And this is because he was civilized by a woman. For better or for worse, <laughs> patriarchally or matriarchally. He came back and sat at the feet of the harlot, watching the harlot, observing her features. Then the harlot's words, he listened intently, and Shamhat talked to him, to Ankudu, before Ankudu didn't have language either. <laughs> Shamhat's the first one to talk to him. You are handsome, Ankudu. You are just like a god. Indeed, he was born from a god. Why, with the beasts, do you wander to the wild? Come, I will take you to Uruk the Sheepfold, to the sacred temple of Anu and Ishtar, where Gilgamesh is perfect in strength, like the wild bull lording over the menfolk. So she spoke with him, and her word found favor. He knew by instinct that he should seek a friend. That's, so that's what it is. This is this is our story arc. Is that Gilgamesh is raping all the women in the city, and so the goddess uh, uh, Ishtar, she, her name always changes, but the goddess made this wild man Ankudu, and then seduced him with her high priestess, so that Ankudu could distract Gilgamesh from his raping and go on manly adventures. Very very disturbing gender things here, but there's a lot to talk about, and I think there's anyway. I'm repeating myself. 
So, it said Ankaju to her, to the harlot, Come, Shamhat, take me along to the sacred temple, holy home of Anu and Ishtar, where Gilgamesh is perfect in strength, like a wild bull lording it over the menfolk. I will challenge him, for my strength is mighty. I will vaunt myself in a rook, saying, I am the mightiest! There I shall change the way things are ordered. One born in the wild is mighty strength he possesses. Shamhat says, Let the people see your face that exists, I know indeed. Go, Ankudu, to Uruk the Shapefold, when, where the young men are girt with waistbands. Gilgamesh isn't letting any of the young men have sex. It's terrible, absolutely terrible. Every day in Uruk there is a festival. The drums there wrap out the beat, and there are harlots, most comely of figure, graced with charm and full of delights. Even the aged they rouse from their beds. Oh, Ankadu, as yet so ignorant of life, I will show you Gilgamesh, a man happy and carefree. Look at him, regard his features. He is fair in manhood, dignified in bearing, graced with charm in his whole person. He has strength more mighty than yours. Unsleeping he is by day and by night. None of these people have to sleep. They're just gods. Oh, Ankadu, cast aside your sinful thoughts. Gilgamesh is whom divine Shamhash loves. The gods Anu, Enlil, and Ea have broadened his wisdom. Before you can even came from the uplands, Gilgamesh of Uruk was seeing you in dreams. Gilgamesh rose to relate a dream, saying to his mother, O oh mother, this is the dream I had in the night, so now we're going to hear Gilgamesh's dream about Ankadu. Aren't you so excited? I'm excited. The stars of the heaven appeared above me. The rock from the sky one fell down before me. I lifted it up, but it weighed too much for me. I tried to roll it, but I could not dislodge it, because remember, Ankadu is as strong as a rock from the sky. The stars of heavens appeared above me, like a rock from the sky. One fell down before me. I lifted it up, but it weighed too much for me. I tried to roll it, but I could not dislodge it. The land of Uruk was standing around it. The land was gathered about it. A crowd was milling about before it. The men folk were thronging around it, this rock from the sky. Like a babe in arms, they were kissing its feet. Like a wife, I loved it, caressed and embraced it. I lifted it up, set it down at your feet. He's speaking to his mother goddess. He, he lifted the rock from the sky up and he set it down at her feet. And you, O oh mother, you made it my equal. The mother of Gilgamesh was clever and wise, well versed in everything. She said to her son, wild cow Ninsun was clever and wise, well versed in everything. She said to Gilgamesh,